I have a liberal arts degree, which I, I mean, I don't look like I have a liberal <laughs> arts degree. I look like a documentary about a town that ran out of coal, but um, who else here has a uh, liberal arts degree? Uh, yeah, yeah that, that, that's not something you should woo. Uh, my, uh, the real question should be, what coffee bean do you work at? Uh, I would do it all over again. I would go to a trade school. That's what I would do. Like, I have a liberal arts degree. They need a scared straight to keep high school kids from getting liberal arts degrees. It's like, oh, oh you want to be a screenwriter? You want to be a screenwriter? I know all the act breaks of L.A. Confidential, and I just sucked a dick for a bagel, you know? <laughs> You know what you never see on YouTube? You never see a cat welcoming a soldier home. That's how you know cats are dicks. You know, dog is, the dog is all over the guy. The cat just w would walk up, be like, you said we won the war on terror, but why are we still in Afghanistan? And then they would disappear behind a radiator for eight months. That's how they become outdoor cats. They have shitty personalities. They're like, boom, thank you for your service. Out. Um, I uh, have smoked weed again. I tried smoking weed again. Uh, I will say this about smoking weed. The blackouts that you have on weed are way better than the blackouts that you get from booze. The blackouts on weed are like, oh shit, did I order a calzone last night? <laughs> Opposing to booze where it's like, oh shit, did I kill the guy who gave me a calzone last night? I'm gonna dye my hair and move to Mexico. I decided to smoke weed and watch uh, Finding Neverland because I guess Amistad and Manchester by the Sea weren't an option. Man, that's a downer, that movie. Don't see that documentary. Horrible what happened to those kids. Terrible, terrible what happened to those kids. Awful. Having said that, <laughs> what a baller weekend for a nine-year-old. Do you know what I mean? You got a Ferris wheel, a monkey butler. Like, I would do it now as a 35-year-old man. I'd be like, Michael, when do I get the funnel cake, you know? But <laughs> I do have a wife. Uh... <laughs> that kind of laugh. <laughs> look, look, I got the ring. Prove it. She's great. She's 39. She looks like she's 28 but she's from Long Island, so she sounds like she's 67. I got home the other day, she had a bikini wax, and I'm like, I wanna fuck you right now. And she's like, thanks, a Korean woman used tweezers on my pussy. I'm like, or I'll just read a book. Uh, she's the first woman I've let stick a finger in my ass, and let me tell you, I've been living a lie my whole life. That shit is fucking amazing. Imagine your whole life eating jelly sandwiches, and then peanut butter comes along. <laughs> like, I've been eating sandwiches wrong this whole time. I got a finger in my ass. The only thing is my butthole was ready for an appetizer, and her thumb was like main course, you know? So I was like, oh my God, that feels good. And pop, no, no, you've awoken the Kraken, you know? I'm like, what? Like, take it out, take it out. But she took it out too fast, so I had to clench my butt cheeks together to prevent a BP oil spill from happening. Like. There should have been a representative from BP in front of my asshole saying, so we did everything we could to stop the leaking, but we couldn't save the sea turtles, you know? We do try to switch stuff up sexually. She started uh, calling me Poppy in the bedroom, which, like, look at me. I'm not a Poppy, you know? If anything, I'm like a step Poppy, you know? Like, I step in and fill the void, the poppy left, and then the kid's like, you're not my poppy, and I'm like, I'm trying, Sharon, you know? <laughs> we, we, do, we do, we switch stuff up sexually. She helped me live out a fantasy that I've always wanted sexually. Uh, can't say what it is. It's a, hand, it's a hand job at a Chinese buffet, but that's not <laughs> here or there. But I was like, what do you want sexually? She's like, I want to peg you. And I said, okay and I didn't know what pegging was. <laughs> Does everyone here know what pegging is? Well, if you don't, this is a terrible way to find out. <laughs> it's 
when a woman or a man that's been in a terrible accident <laughs> apply, t- attaches a dildo to their front and they penetrate you from behind. This bit alienates both liberals and conservatives because <laughs> conservatives are like, gross, and liberals are like, we don't want you either, you know? But it's 2019, I'm a woke male. I'll get fucked in the ass for my wife. Let me tell you something, not for me. I don't know how you gay guys do it. I made a sound I didn't know a living thing could make. I literally went, ooh, okay? Sounded like Scooby-Doo solving the trickiest mystery. But you know, the second time was a lot more fun. So I can't complain about that. You guys have been a good audience. I've had a lot of bad shows before. I did a show at the Fort Lauderdale Hard Rock Cafe and Casino. I believe Lauderdale is Spanish for a pregnant woman that still smokes. Uh, think about a, I mean, think about a Hard Rock in Fort Lauderdale. It, it, it's not like a Hard Rock in New York and Austin. In New York and Austin, it's like here's the guitar, Jimi Hendrix set on fire. Here's the microphone that Janis Joplin held. But in Fort Lauderdale, it's like here's the napkin Fred Durst wrote the lyrics to Nookie on, and. <laughs> Here's the crock pot Courtney Love threw up in, and here's puddle of mud, not even memorabilia, we just have them. The worst show that I ever did, though, I did a show at this club, Vancouver Yuck Yucks, which is a great club, even though Yuck Yuck is not a sound people make when they laugh. (laughs) Like, Yuck Yuck Yuck, are you in the Star Wars cantina? What's happening? But I was backstage, and uh, I was headlining, and there's an opener, and then there was a middle act. And the opener uh, went up, the host, and he comes backstage and goes, I just want to let you know, there's somebody to the right, they're really drunk, they're really out of it. I'm like, oh shit, god damn it. Comes back a second time, he's heckling now, he's making a scene, like, oh god damn, fuck. Third time, he's like harassing the waitresses, it's getting really creepy, I'm like, oh god damn, fine, fuck. And now I'm getting pissed. So I get on stage, I start doing my act, and I see this guy, it's the right, and I see, all I can see is his face, I can't see his body, and he looks fucked up, and I'm like, this guy comes to my show, gets drunk, heckles people, becomes a problem, I'm gonna shit on him, I start shitting on him, it gets silent. And that's when I found out they had gotten rid of the drunk guy before I got on stage. And I was shitting on someone with cerebral palsy, yes. How did I find that out? Someone yelled, he's got cerebral palsy, you fucking asshole. And I, in a panic, go, so do I. And then everyone was confused. They're like, are there two types of cerebral palsy? Does he have the not as bad cerebral palsy? Does he have the Magic Johnson cerebral palsy? (laughs) Guys, Magic Johnson's doing better than all of us combined. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) 